So, Tim, what are we? What's the, what's the topic for today? Topic for today, because we are we are in the month of September, mm -hmm. and September is Suicide Awareness Month. Um, it'd be a good use of our time to chat about suicide a little bit today. Mm -hmm. I know it's not the, not the not, not the most fun topic we've ever had on here, right. uh, but I think it's an important one, and it's worth. I, I don't know. I think guys like us being able to chat about it on this podcast to put out some good info. I, yeah, I, I hear, and I like kind of what you said at the end, you know, uh, not that this conversation today is dedicated necessarily to men, but I, but I think I, I also potentially want to talk a little bit about that, you know, men just don't really talk about feelings to begin with, especially when it comes to suicide, mm -hmm. you know, uh, which one can perceive in many different ways, you know, uh, almost like a weakness, you know, and, and men are not very big on that. I, I do kind of want to highlight that as well during our conversation. Oh, but, but uh, yeah. you know, let us know what you think about it, kind of what, what do we do, what's this, what's coming up for you when we think of suicide? Yeah, you know, the, what, what, what comes to me, you know, the, the statistics are out there and, you know, there are many and I could rattle them off, but, but basically the point is um, it happens a lot. Um, it's, it's, it's a public health crisis. Um, it's very, very common. Um, and if you look at any of the stats, it's, you know, I, I, every 22 minutes, uh, um, 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 a veteran takes their life or, you know, it's the, the, the tenth leading cause of, 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 of preventable deaths in the United States. So, so, so this is a big deal, right? And, and we really don't talk about it. It's, it, it, it's still very taboo. And, um, I wanted to normalize the conversation a little bit today, right? Um, what I hear often is um, people are so afraid to ask right. if another person is having any thoughts about suicide. Um, and, and I think that there are a lot of myths out there, right? Like if someone's going through uh, a difficult time and if someone asks them, are you thinking about suicide? Right. There's this myth that you'll like give them the right. idea. Right. Right. So people say, oh, like, I, I don't want to like, like they're in a bad spot. I don't even want to bring up suicide because then they'll probably do it. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, it absolutely does not work that way. There's no data to suggest that. And in fact, that's exactly what people need the most um, when they're struggling for someone to ask them that direct question of, right. have you had any thoughts about harming yourself? Are you thinking about ending your life? Right. That question, as hard as it is for us to get out, it's exactly what people need. And because there's so much stigma around this and, and discomfort and and, and we sweep all of this under the rug, despite the data um, and despite the statistics, um, those questions are never asked. People don't check in on each other. Right. People don't ask those questions. Um, and really, m my, my spiel or, or, or my shtick on, on, on our talk today is just to have people step out of their comfort zone and be able to ask their loved ones if they see them going through a hard time, the really difficult question. Right. I, 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 I really like the way you put it because to your point, I would imagine lots of the listeners out there and i think a lot of clinicians to be honest with you don't ask these questions because they still want to get into the sticky conversation mm -hmm. they don't want to like oh my god what if i give them an idea yeah. of, of how to do it and the, just the science just really isn't there to suggest that that's true so I, I just think what you just it's just so vital for people to know and mm -hmm. just even for for listeners you don't have to be a, a clinician just like if you see somebody struggling try to lean in and have a conversation yeah. Uh, no one's asking you to be a shrink. No one's asking you to be a therapist. Just, hey, listen, someone is struggling. Don't think that asking that question would all of a sudden create like a light bulb. Wow, I was sad and I didn't know what to do. And now you ask this question. Oh, that makes a lot of sense, right? Like the, I think this light bulb that, you, that people are concerned of giving to the individual that's struggling, that's just not true. It could be for the uh, truth. You know, if, if it's anything, if anything, it's, it's the opposite. You're helping an individual to organize their thinking and their pattern of thought and you're helping them verbalize how they're feeling which has been that has actually been shown to be effective mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so i i i you know I, I can't agree with you more i just think it's such an important uh message to put out there yeah let me ask you this as mm -hmm. as 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 a clinician as a therapist as a psychologist um what's um i don't know what what's what's um a um a part of suicidality that 
that most people probably wouldn't know or even think about or understand mm. without having you know some expertise in the field? Uh, I think that the biggest thing uh, I feel like uh, that comes up for people is they think that once you start feeling suicidal, it lasts forever. I think that I think that's a, I think that's a big it's a, it's potentially unspoken and I think maybe even me verbalizing out there for some of the listeners like oh yeah I never thought of it but that's sort of I I, I don't know I, 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 speaking to a lot of people uh, be it clients or be it outside they, they just have this idea like once a person has these thoughts it's sort of like this just gonna just gonna continue until the execution and and the research again the research really isn't there mm-hmm. there really isn't. Most often, it's seen as a behavior to solve a problem, or thought or a feeling to solve a problem, uh, and it's transient and it changes depending on what's going on internally, right? So, for instance, you know, obviously, depression has been associated significantly with suicidal thinking, right? So, so getting help to address the underlying issue changes how we see it, or changes our thoughts about it. So, that's probably one thing. Uh, that, that I would like the listener to know is that it's not true that it continues forever. It is dependent on the experience that the individual is having. And if, the, if hopefully the person is open to getting help, that help actually helps with how they think about suicide, what their yeah. intent is, what the plan is. Uh, you know, obviously, there's no guarantees about that. You know, the thoughts will disappear. But it's not really about the thoughts disappearing. It's about the intensity that the individual will have when it comes to those thoughts and it's also the idea that once we can, you know, improve one's functioning, th- those thoughts begin to, you know, I'll, I'll say it this way, dissipate and are less intense as an individual moves forward in life. And I think that's also a critical point uh, to make that it fluctuates based on the underlying state that the person finds themselves. It is not just a permanent state going forward. Right, right. It's, it's, it's very dependent on everything that's happening before them. Right. Right. Um, and I do think that that that's an important point. And also another important point, um, folks who are having suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideas, they don't have them all the time. Right. You know, um, mm-hmm. they might have them some parts of the day and not others, right? right. Um, and that happens too. Um, and um, yeah, it, it, it's very important to, to distinction to make that, I hate, uh, I don't like to say in this way, but you know, the, the way that I see suicidality um, and, and, and suicidal ideation, um, a person must be going through an immense amount of pain right. where there's no other option, no other hope, and the only option is to right. escape that pain by doing, right. you know, taking their own life. Right. In a way, it's a quote-unquote solution. Right. Right? And so what's so important is, like, if we're able to talk about that pain, you know, that's leading to that, quote, with the hopelessness and then that quote-unquote solution, right. um, that's where we have to do the work, right? So, so again, and then going back to, to, to my first point, checking in with people, right. asking the question, seeing how people are doing. Right, right. Yeah, it's, I mean, very, to me, very well put. It's, it's a solution. Uh, it's ineffective solution to a particular problem that exists. And it's also not necessarily another thing that I, I find some clinicians do is that they want to take that solution off the table. But again, you got to be comfortable enough to be able... Yes, it's a solution. And mm-hmm. also let's consider others, right? It's a it's a potentially a scarier approach, but it's more effective because we don't want to talk anybody into anything or everything. Interestingly enough, when we just create more choice and when we can address, let's say, the trauma, uh, let's say for a veteran, mm-hmm. right? Or depression or anything like that. Naturally an individual leans into more effective and productive solutions rather than suicide. So that's another thing just to kind of keep in mind uh, when you're thinking about individuals that are struggling with these extremely difficult thoughts. Yeah. Tough conversation to have, but important conversation to have. Right. And I think that leads us to our last call. Right. Uh, what's your takeaway? My takeaway is... I'll just stick with one today. Mm-hmm. My takeaway is... Um, ask the question. <laughs> There's no negatives that can come from asking anyone the question of, are you having thoughts about ending your life? Mm. My takeaway and my ask of people, ask the question. It's uncomfortable, please do it anyways. <laughs> that can be the thing that actually saves one of your loved one's lives. lives. I, I think that's super important. I also think if, if anybody's listening out there that's been struggling with these thoughts, uh, please potentially see it 
as just an not a great solution to an underlying problem. And if you're able to find yourself to be able to reach out for help and that uh, underlying issue could be addressed, those thoughts and feelings become less intense and they bother you less so that you can move forward with your love. They, oftentimes they're transient based on the sort of the difficult emotions that you find yourself having. And if you can address the actual issue, the this unproductive solution tends to be uh, less prominent in one's thinking. So that's really my ask. Don't see it as a kind of fatalistic kind of a thinking pattern. Please notice as that is a, is a potential solve to a problem that could be solved in a different way. Mm -hmm. Awesome point. Well, thanks as always, Constantine. Yeah. And thanks as always, listeners. And we'll be talking to you soon. Mm -hmm.